The James Webb Telescope is without a doubt one of the most amazing technological advancements in the field of space observation. It heralds the start of a new era that will see several groundbreaking developments in this field. Although this telescope has significant potential and has already begun to reveal numerous mystical secrets of our universe, the potential of space observation depends on other forthcoming technologies as well. According to reports, the James Webb Space Telescope JWST has found the first proof that millions of supermassive stars may have been hidden at the beginning of the universe. The largest stars that have been seen anywhere yet are about 300 times as massive as the Sun, just 440 million years after the Big Bang. The James Webb Space Telescope has discovered important chemical signatures of supermassive stars. So how does the James Webb Telescope find evidence of celestial monster stars? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. According to recent studies by the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, Cosmic monsters are thought to reside in dense star clusters that formed only a few hundred million years after the universe's creation. Supermassive stars are these monstrosities, and JWST discovered evidence of them in global clusters that were formed some 13.4 billions of years ago. Nearly every galaxy has globular clusters, and our own Milky Way contains at least 180 of them. In addition to being the most massive and old star clusters, globular clusters can contain up to a million stars that were born together as early as 440 million years after the Big Bang. These stars can also exhibit oddities that are not present in any other stellar collections, despite the fact that they all formed at the same time from a single collapsing cloud of cold gas and dust. Globular clusters stars can exhibit substantial levels of compositional heterogeneity in globular clusters. Different stars in the cluster have different ratios of oxygen, nitrogen, sodium, and aluminum. Astronomers now have a formidable problem in trying to understand these so-called abundance anomalies. Supermassive stars pollute the first gas cloud when globular clusters develop, according to one theory for this puzzle put back in 2018. As a result, the young star's enrichment with chemical elements throughout their formation is uneven. The first observable evidence for this enrichment idea has now been released and it comes from the announcement of a team of researchers that JWST has discovered chemical clues indicating the monstrous stars are actually hiding in stellar clusters. Today, thanks to the data collected by the JWST, we believe we have found a first clue of the presence of these extraordinary stars," said research lead author Corinne Charbonneau, an astronomy professor at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. At their cores, these supermassive stars can reach temperatures of 135 million degrees Fahrenheit. 75 million degrees Celsius, which is much hotter than the Sun's core, which only reaches about 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, 15 million degrees C, which is between 5,000 and 10,000 times as large. These star animals, however, are not always simple to find despite their ominous bulk and dreadful temperatures. They have short lifespans as a result of rapidly depleting the nuclear fusion fuel. In the same statement, team member Mark Gales of the University of Barcelona noted that globular clusters are between 10 and 13 billion years old, whereas stars have a maximum life of 2 million years. They consequently left the clusters that are today detectable extremely rarely. There are no direct traces left. The research team used JWST's infrared vision to attempt to catch globular clusters earlier in the evolution in order to look for traces in these enormous stars. The powerful space telescope observed light coming from GNZ 11, one of the oldest and most distant galaxies seen yet. It is a suitable place to look for early globular clusters because the galaxy is around 13.3 billion light years away and can be seen by JWST, as it was when it was only a few tens of millions of years old. The spectrum of light from cosmic sources has fingerprints that reveal the composition of astronomical objects, since chemical components absorb and emit light at specific frequencies. Two important bits of information were discovered by the astronomers as they dissected the light from GNZ 11 as viewed by JWST. The mysterious supermassive stars, the James Webb Space Telescope, which scientists have termed a celestial monster, has completely changed how we perceive the cosmos by revealing the first chemical signs of enormous stars. These enormous stars were there in the early universe and have evaded discovery up until this point. Their luminosity is comparable to millions of suns. Researchers from Europe have now discovered proof to back up their groundbreaking theory. 
which they first proposed in 2018, unraveling the mystery of globular clusters. The baffling variation in the chemical makeup of stars within globular clusters, ancient stellar clusters containing millions of stars in a very tiny space, has baffled astronomers for decades. These clusters, which were thought to form a link between the earliest stars and galaxies, have prompted interest in the origins of the many chemical components they contain. The chemical diversity of these stars is astounding, despite the fact that they sprang from the same gas cloud at roughly the same period. The Rampaging Supermassive Star Theory The study team from Europe makes an intriguing argument to explain the chemical diversity found within globular clusters. They imply the existence of a gigantic star that is raging and spewing chemical pollution into its environs. Through repeated collisions within the densely packed cluster, this enormous star, which resembles a nuclear reactor, swallows and absorbs nearby stars. It releases a significant amount of materials over time, feeding nearby young stars that are forming and enriching them with a variety of chemical components. Rampaging Seed Star It would take enormous quantities of heat to create many of the elements found in stars, such as aluminum, which would need a temperature of up to 70 million degrees Celsius. That is much hotter than the 15 to 20 million degrees Celsius or around the same as the sun that stars are estimated to reach in their cores. The scientists therefore proposed a hypothetical solution, a raging supermassive star spewing forth chemical pollution, according to their theories. The repeated collisions in the densely packed globular clusters are what give birth to these enormous stars. Lead author of the study and astrophysics professor at the University of Geneva, Corinne Charbonneau predicted that a kind of seed star would engulf more and more stars. It would eventually transform into a huge-like nuclear reactor, continuously feeding on the matter, which will eject out a lot of it," the scientists continued. The new stars that are emerging will be fed by this pollution and receive a wide array of chemicals that closer than they are to the supermassive star. Observations Supporting the Theory Researchers focused on the nearly 13 billion light-year distant galaxy GNZ-11 to confirm their hypothesis. The James Webb Space Telescope, which will replace Hubble, was given the perfect opportunity to demonstrate its capabilities when it was used to study this galaxy, which was found by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2015. Astronomers discovered the long-awaited proof of supermassive stars by analyzing the light radiated from GNZ-11, which appeared just 440 million years after the Big Bang. The James Webb Telescope's Remarkable Discovery with its remarkable sensitivity and cutting-edge capabilities, the James Webb Space Telescope has provided evidence for the existence of these celestial monsters. Observations of GNZ-11 by the telescope have revealed the existence of a supermassive star with a mass that is thought to be between 5,000 and 10,000 times that of the Sun. With its insights into the genesis and development of stars and galaxies, this discovery represents a critical turning point in our comprehension of the early universe. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has found the first proof that the early cosmos may have had millions of supermassive stars with masses up to 10,000 times that of the Sun. The stars which formed only 440 million years after the Big Bang, they provide insight into how the heavy elements that make up our universe were first introduced. On May 5th, scientists published their findings in the Journal of Astronomy and Astrophysics under the moniker Celestial Monsters, the term they gave to the enormous stars. According to lead study author Corinne Charbonneau, an astronomy professor at the University of Geneva in Switzerland, we believe we have found a first clue of the presence of these extraordinary stars, today owing to the data gathered by the James Webb Space Telescope. The globular clusters, which are collections of tens of thousands of millions of densely packed stars, many of which are among the oldest stars to have ever formed in the cosmos, are where the researchers discovered chemical remnants of the enormous giants. Our Milky Way galaxy is home to over 180 globular clusters, which scientists utilize as windows into the early days of the universe due to their age. Strangely, while developing at around the same period and from the same gas and dust clouds 13.4 billions of years ago, some of the stars in these clusters had dramatically differing ratios of the elements oxygen, nitrogen, sodium, and aluminum. The existence of supermassive stars, cosmic giants born in the denser conditions of the early universe, which burned their fuel at much higher temperatures, producing heavier elements than that polluted smaller infant stars, which typically consist of much lighter elements, according to astronomers, could explain this elemental variety. However, locating these stars has been challenging. The blazing titans, which range in size from 5,000 to 10,000 times that of our Sun, blazed at a temperature of 135 million degrees Fahrenheit, 75 million degrees Celsius. These cosmic monsters have long since perished in the most ferocious explosions known as hypernovas, which occur when stars are bigger, brighter, and hotter fade out the fastest. 
Superstars have a maximum lifespan of 2 million years, whereas globular clusters are between 10 and 13 billion years old. Therefore, they left the clusters that are currently visible quite early. Only indirect signs are still present according to co-author Mark Gillis, an astrophysics professor at the University of Barcelona. The astronomers focused on the JWST's infrared camera on the galaxy GNZ11, one of the oldest and most distant galaxies ever found resting 13.3 billion light-years from Earth, in order to find the chemical waste left behind by the ancient beasts. By dissecting the light coming from the various globular clusters spread throughout GNZ11, the astronomers discovered that not only were its stars closely packed, but they were also surrounded by large levels of nitrogen. Different substances absorb and emit light at different frequencies. The strong presence of nitrogen can only be explained by the combustion of hydrogen at extremely high temperatures, which only the core of supermassive stars can reach," Charbonneau exclaimed. The researchers will investigate additional globular clusters and more galaxies after discovering the initial cues for the celestial monsters to determine whether their discovery holds true elsewhere. Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us to understand our audience and allows YouTube to suggest similar videos to you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one.